Hello and welcome back to Lessons in Attachment. I am Carly Ann, the very proud founder of the Attachment Recovery Gym. This is an online space for those of you that feel anxious in your relationship and you're in the learning and action phase of your healing. Basically, you're ready for change and you are determined to become secure and so much more. I'm teaching and sharing from a space with over a decade of professional experience and three decades of personal experience. And basically, I hope that this podcast provides you with plenty of gems and ideas as you also move from anxious towards secure. Today, I want to talk to those of you that are experiencing doubt in your relationship or perhaps with the person that you're dating. And I'm going to give you some tips of how to manage that. Firstly, just to say, I know it's not an easy place to be. The likelihood is that you probably just want to be in a relationship that is right for you. And it can be really disappointing and difficult when you find yourself doubting your current situation. Now, this can come in different forms. You might find that the doubt is about yourself in this relationship. It might be about the other person or it might even be about the relationship itself. But what I will say that we tend to know, the research indicates anyway, that when there is more self-doubt or when there is more uncertainty within your relationship, it can lead to higher levels of jealousy, higher levels of hypervigilance in your relationship, doubting the faithfulness of this person, looking for threats to the relationship and you might even be spending lots of time ruminating and worrying trying to figure out is this the right relationship for me and it might even be making you feel like you're going crazy the way that you just don't know and I do want to just normalize that for a moment that there can be times in our lives where we just don't know yet and I think something that really goes on with this is that movie like fairy tale, you know, that that quote of when you know, you know, and maybe you don't know, and there might be different reasons why you're not sure. You might be at a stage of your relationship where genuinely it's just not that clear yet. It's the earlier stages or something's happened recently. You're going through a moment of uncertainty in your relationship. It's possible with anxious attachment as well that you do struggle with that uncertainty anyway, hence the worrying, the ruminating and the trying to figure it out. And that period of not knowing can be really anxiety provoking. So just to say that it is okay not to be in that space where you absolutely know or to be going between the two. I think that's really key to share. You're not on your own if you are struggling with that difficulty in this of, but I should know, aren't we supposed to know? Can't I understand my intuition? Don't I know myself enough? There is sometimes this place between knowing and not knowing, and that is okay. And who knows where this is coming from for you? It might be coming from a place of fear. We'll think about that. It might be coming from a place of something's happened recently that's changed your world view or your view of this person or the relationship. Maybe you're going through a difficult time right now and everything feels a little bit uncertain. I'm not sure without making guesses for you. I guess just what I'm really trying to provide here in this moment is some normalising. What I don't want to do is provide a space that says, hey, just stick out something when you're extremely unhappy and you do know that this isn't right, but you're staying somewhere from fear. So this isn't that. That's probably something different. If you're in a space of knowing, but I don't know how to move forward, that might be slightly different or 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 a lot different to those of you where it's like, I just don't know. I just have so much anxiety around the choices that I'm making in this relationship. So yeah, I get you. I hear you. I feel you. And anxious attachers, relationships aren't easy for us anyway. If you are in a place where you didn't grow up with secure relationships, you stepped into adulthood 
with insecurity and not really knowing how to read what is a healthy relationship and what isn't, then it might even be really difficult to know when to stay in a relationship and when not to, because you might not know exactly what you're looking for. So how does that sit with you so far? Anything that I have said to this point, it's just like, ah, okay, maybe I need to remember that. Maybe I could add some compassion here. So just take a moment with that and then let's go into some, just some tips that might help you with this chapter of your life or this part of a chapter of your life that you're in. All right, so I am going to give you a few tips and if you have any to add, please, because I'm on YouTube as well, so please do add any comments. I think on Spotify, you can actually leave comments and things now, but I haven't figured that out. I honestly think at this stage, the best way to leave me messages and let me know, hey, Carly, this is also a really good tip for when I was feeling uncertain in my relationship, or this has been something that's helping me, is to let me know on Instagram carly.ann underscore come and follow me over there let me know that you're a listener or a watcher got to remember about youtube now um yeah let me know um because it's just wonderful to know who i'm connecting with to be honest i'm so passionate about you and helping you on this journey so come and share your experiences with me anyway as always i digress <laughs> firstly be patient with yourself Okay, there are times in my life where I really feel like I have not known things and getting to this place where I am now, which is where I'm able to say, you know what, I actually don't know yet, has been really, really powerful. And I think we can have this tendency to have a sense of urgency, to rush ourselves that we should know. Like I was saying, it's okay to be in a space of the unknown. It's It really is. See if you can tolerate that. Be patient with yourself. Maybe get to know this person if you don't know them that much already. Maybe tap back into the relationship and just see what happens when you come at this from a place of patience. Next, maintain self-love. Maintain who you are. If you have already established this, of course, continue to work on you, continue to do what lights you up. If this isn't a place that you've reached yet, then maybe the tip is around discovering this. Maybe the tip is around offering yourself more self-love and just living a life that's a bit more for you as well. You don't want to be so consumed in this relationship and trying to figure this out. And one of the best ways to do that is to love on yourself, to date yourself, do things that you've been thinking about doing, connect with you and your relationship. Next, I would really be considering is, is this a pattern? Is this something that I see show up in my relationships time and time again, this self-doubt? I've been working with someone more recently where that is the case. And so that's what we've been looking at, not going over and over, should I be in this relationship or should I not? But really looking at, this is a pattern that comes up. When you find yourself liking someone, when you find that there is a possibility of commitment and they are interested too, that you find yourself then doubting everything. And then comes the hypervigilance, the jealousy and all of those kind of things. If it's a pattern, it might be more of a sign to be doing the inner work. If it's not a pattern, then it might well be that this isn't the one for you. That can not be the easiest thing to admit, but it's just something to consider, right? That's not 100% though. You don't have to take my word for that. I don't know either. A question that I ask anyone that I'm working with, and I really want you guys to be considering when you're listening to this podcast, is the relationship that you're considering, is it healthy? If it's healthy, okay, let's spend some time figuring this out. If this is a case of you ignoring red flags, hoping that someone's going to change, chasing someone unavailable that's hurting you, that's a bit different. You know, what are we uncertain about? Are we uncertain about do I stick this out? Do I continue to hurt myself? Do I continue to chase someone that doesn't see me? I think that there is probably slightly different than if this is a healthy kind of secure dynamic where you're noticing 
these feelings come up where and you're questioning is this my anxiety about commitment is is this right for me and there's that kind of uncertainty so knowing the difference there is really really key knowing why you're staying what is it that is making me stay here what is it that makes me afraid to leave if I was going to leave and to step out on my own and to take this next day step? Doesn't mean that that is the outcome. It's just a question of, is there something, like what's the number one thing making me stay? What's the number one thing um, not making me want to leave? But also you could look at that the other way around as well. What is it that's making me feel like I want to get out of this? See if you can identify the fears involved without judgment, without ruminating, but that's going to be really telling, right? What are the fears guiding this uncertainty? That's going to be really, really useful. Get to know those underlying factors. You might even see that showing up in the patterns as well, and that might help you have some idea of actually that is a fear driving this and I'm actually ready to find out what happens if I don't listen to this fear. I'm ready to find out if I if I was to be more present with this relationship and this person, how that can play out. If you've been following my work for a while, this one won't be a surprise, but it is to know your values and your needs. If you know your values, you're going to be more likely to know when someone's compatible for you and when they aren't. Like, do you know what it is that creates a meaningful life for you, what lights you up and what doesn't. The more you know that, the more you'll start go going to, you're, the more you're going to understand what feels right for you and what doesn't right, uh, what isn't right for you. Can't get my words out. What's right for you and what isn't right for you. That's really, really key. Starting to know, well, actually, I value this and maybe this is why I'm doubting the relationship here. Or maybe I'm seeing that this doesn't match up with my values. Not an easy thing to discover. Like I say, especially if you're in a place where it's like, but I feel like time is running out. I just want to meet someone. Everyone around me is like meeting people. You know, that's the fears that I'm talking about. Get clear on your values and be really, really honest with yourself. And mostly because what I don't want this episode to do is I really don't want it to trigger you into worrying and ruminating and trying to figure out something where um, you're just not quite there yet. Stay as present as possible. Stay as present as possible. Be grounding yourself. Be doing that somatic inner work. And what I would say here that can really, really help is to take a moment to access my free meditation. It's called Curiously Triggered and it helps you to go inward. It's an inner guided experience to explore what is it that's triggering me? What's going on within me? And it really promotes inner communication from a healthy place, from curiosity. So I really recommend that, Curiously Triggered. Have a listen to that and just see if anything comes up. Maybe it will be in addition to something that stood out to you in this episode of Lessons in Attachment. You know, what is it that's speaking to you in my words? Are there certain messages you're getting from the books that you're reading at the moment, the podcasts that you're listening to? Allow yourself to meet this with curiosity. But like I say, I really don't want to be feeding into your rumination and overthinking and obsessing about this. Be present and see what happens with your life. Curiously Triggered is really, really great for that. Guys, I could keep going with all of the tips. I know that probably what you really want to get from this episode is certainty. You want me to be able to answer that question of, is this relationship right for me? Someone tell me. That's not my job here. My job is actually to help people with the experience of uncertainty, to be able to tolerate when you're in that phase and help you move towards that inner knowing. Now, some of you will already have that inner knowing. And like I say, this is more a case of unlocking the fears and unlocking what's holding you back. And some of you will just be really unsure at the moment. Neither are easy places to be. But I believe in you and I believe that 
things unfold for us naturally. We need to take action and that action is often about looking inwards, taking time, self-compassion, being present and knowing when to walk away from red flags and anyone that is not treating you well, okay? You don't need to be uncertain about that. If you're seeing red flags, you don't need to be uncertain about that. If you're seeing green flags, take some time and really consider what is going on for you. If it's a mix, I know that can be difficult. Don't forget you can join the Attachment Recovery Gym. There's so much support over there. There's Q&As over there. You might want to ask more questions about your situation. It's okay to need help at this time. Okay, I get so passionate, I could keep going. So I hope that you took some gems some ideas from this and I will be back here soon don't forget I'm Carly Ann Carly.Ann underscore on Instagram and I really truly believe that you deserve a healthy happy love in your lifetime especially when you did not have the best start in love